Peace Officer Background Investigation Tracking System, also known as POBITS, is a commercial system used by a number of law enforcement agencies to aid them in the process of conducting background investigations on candidates for peace officer positions. System users are able to provide access to external users to view certain investigation cases, and they may set limitations on what you can do while navigating the case file. This presentation will familiarize you with the system and how to navigate an investigation case file within it. You will receive an email similar to this. The message informs you of when your system access expires and provides a direct link to the system which will automatically pass your credentials to log you in. Alternatively, you can use the link provided here and enter your credentials manually. Note that the message includes an email address for system support and if you have any trouble accessing the system, use this address to request help. I will use the direct link to log in. When you log in for the first time, you will have to change your password. Use a good password with at least eight characters. Once logged in, you will see a list of candidates to which you have been given access. Once logged in, you can see all candidates to which you have access. If there are a lot of them, you can use the headers to sort on those values or you can use the filter boxes to enter a full or partial value of the item to filter the list down to uh, a lesser number of candidates. When you're ready to view the candidate, go to the View button associated on its list item. This brings up the case file. Uh, the case is divided into two pieces. One piece is just the personal information of the candidate. Just think of that as being the information about the person. Uh, typically on a personal history statement, it's like it's the first page of the uh, questionnaire. Associated with the person will be one or more cases, uh, typically only one, but sometimes there can be multiples as you see here. And then there are also some notes on the candidate uh, listed right here that you may have access to. So the personal information is simply that. It's the personal information and the case handling information on the candidate. It's mostly uh, statistical, date of birth, citizenship, and then a lot of contact information and this sort of thing. Associated with the candidate will be any number of cases, and you can see that there are three cases uh, in this uh, associated with this candidate, and one of them is not closed, the other are closed. Our cases in POBITS have uh, stages, and uh, one of the stages is candidate update, and when the case is completely done, it is set to close. Nevertheless, whichever case you want to look at, go to the Actions tab and select Open. If you get this box, just say no. So this is the dashboard of the case itself uh, that you can see a summary of much of the information. These checkboxes down here just indicate uh, that the investigator marked these areas as complete. There's a little bit of case handling information over on the right. There's a progress bar that just shows how uh, far along the case is in its progression. Uh, if it's uh, open, then it may not be very far along. If it's closed, it should be pretty far along or done. Uh, up at the top are uh, several menu items, and the ones most uh, particular to you would be the investigative case areas. These investigative areas should look pretty familiar to you uh, because every uh, law enforcement personal history questionnaire contains most of these, or in some cases all of them. Let me open one just so you can have a, a look how it's structured. Uh, we're in the relative section, and the relative section is broken down into different types of relatives. You have parents, you have spouses, you have siblings and children. Up at the top, and this is true for every investigative area, is the investigator's narrative section. Now be advised that you may not have access to this because the investigator can determine whether or not you do. And if you don't, then you don't. And you'll the form will start down here with the parents. Within the investigative area, we have a number of subjects, in this case, all relatives. And for any of these people, you can go over to the Actions tab, 
and select review and then you can open up the uh, the person and see what there is to be seen about this uh, now again you have investigators notes and these may or may not be available to you if the investigator who gave you access has decided not to give you that access then you don't have it otherwise you can see just all of the uh, contact information and details about this uh, person you can also see questionnaires related to this person so usually there will only be one in here and you could click on it and uh, review it uh, and you could look at the questionnaire provided by that person the secondary references tab in this case is a list of uh, any secondary references provided by this person and then the, each uh, person has an access log so we can see when they access the system and we can see a Google map of where they uh, where their address is so that's a an overview of a subject within an investigative area if I were to open any of the other relatives be it a spouse sibling or children the forms look exactly the same and in fact they look exactly the same wherever you traverse in the system so now you should have some familiarity about what you're going to see when you come into the system again I've come into one investigative area and I've looked at the elements in there uh, just to reinforce that thought we'll go into uh, references and you'll see the same thing the narrative section up here then you see all of the references provided by the candidate if you want to, you can come in and then review them. You see that same familiar layout of what you may see some or partial of. And you can also look at this, uh, you can look at the secondary references because they are similar to references, only they're not provided by the candidate. And as you traverse through the system, then uh, I think it'll get very familiar with you. If we go into education, of course, what you're going to see in here is a list of schools. We break those down by high school, colleges, trade schools, and, and others. And, uh, and now's a good time to also show you that in any investigative area uh, that has yes and no questions, like this one does, uh, you will see, uh, for example, a, uh, that there will be questions. And wherever the candidate has answered yes to a question there will be an explanation in this case they answered yes to have you ever been placed on academic discipline and so there's a set aside answer specifically for that question down here and you could go review this and in reviewing it you can see all of the details provided by the candidate and in some cases if you're allowed to you'll be able to see the investigators adjudication of that issue So now let's uh, go to even one more area. Uh, here again, you'll see, uh, let's look at uh, legal. It's a large area. Lots of yes, no questions. You may or may, may not be able to see the, the narrative. Uh, here we ask the uh, candidate if they've ever had incursions with law enforcement of any kind, and all of those would be listed here in that same similar screen that you've seen uh, already. So the paradigm continues to be uh, the same throughout the system. Uh, then there's a number of general questions, a number of uh, 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 questions of undetected acts, which are basically... Uh, misdemeanor acts and then a number of uh, undetected acts which are basically felony acts and again for any question that's answered yes and we have one up here so you can see that uh, this question was answered yes by the candidate and then there's a response to it down here and if I open it it looks uh, uh, very similar to what we've already looked at a couple of times and so you get familiar with how these things uh, present themselves so that's the way all of the investigative areas work. I don't need to open all of them for you, but to look at any particular area, that's what you're going to do and go through the system looking at these things. Bear in mind that some of these items may not be present uh, because the investigators can select some items to, to be in the case file or not. And so if you don't see all of these things, it's a function of how the investigator is using the system. There are some elements uh, up here. There are a number of... Uh, a uh, couple of menus, uh, one that's uh, useful to the investigator and it may or may not be useful to you is the concerns and the concerns report generates a uh, quick list of everywhere where the candidate had some kind of an issue and answered yes or no and frankly you've already looked at a couple of those when a candidate answers yes to a question they provide an explanation and that's what these things are right here so it's a real easy way to uh, traverse all of that. And uh, I do see that um, 
Uh, navigationally, I don't have a way back home, and that's uh, something I'm going to have to fix right away. But let's just go ahead and uh, refresh the screen, which should bring us back to our home screen pretty well. Okay, so uh, there we've gone into a case file and looked at it, and we've uh, I've shown you how to traverse around in the system somewhat. Again, that's something else I'll have to try to repair. And uh, other actions in here, you, uh, you may or may not be able to see attachments and you may or may not be able to run any reports. If that menu doesn't pop anything down, then the investigator has not given you access to any of these reports. But these reports are here. For example, the uh, personal history statement itself could uh, be generated here. Whether or not these uh, items can be printed is a touchy subject. And so it depends on your role and what you do. And it depends on just how tightly the organization wants to hold these things. Obviously, if you're given the ability to generate any of these reports, it's uh, it's almost like they're giving them away, and this information is tends to be pretty closely held. So don't be surprised if you don't have access to any of these reports. It's simply an option that we've given those users. So that's a fundamental overview of how to navigate the system once you're in there. Uh, there's really, it's. I think it's quite simple. Uh, just to review, you've got a personal information section that's just uh, basic details about the candidate, who they are, citizenship, and legal authorization to work, and some stats and that sort of thing. And then there's a tab with one or more uh, cases associated with the candidate. In most cases, I think you'll only see one, and you can navigate into that case and look around to do whatever it is you need to do. So if you have any issues or trouble uh, understanding the system or navigating it, uh, the best thing to do is to send a email to support at pobits.com. As I showed you earlier in the video, we'll be happy to help you with those things. If there's uh, fundamental issues about the case, then you should contact the agency or that investigator in particular who provided you access for those types of questions because over here we, we don't know. So uh, enjoy the system. Uh, I hope you like it. If it's suitable for your agency, uh, do give us a call and we'll talk to you about using the system. Otherwise, I think now you're all set to navigate the system, find the information you need and, uh, and move along about your business. When you are done with your system, we do appreciate it if you log out. That closes the session completely and saves us a little bit of memory on the server. Thanks for watching.